it's tabletop time. I'm Dave. And I'm Alicia. And I'm Jen. And uh, I'm... Pl- oh, and I'm Lachlan. And I'm Alicia. And, and I'm, I'm Dave. And, and I'm, I'm the Jen, narrator. And, and I'm, I'm Lachlan. Playing, and I'm Alicia. And I'm playing Ferdinand. I'm sorry <laughs> that person that doesn't like people being interrupted. This wasn't... <laughs> and I'm idea. Dave. And I'm the narrator of this session. And today we'll be playing Skyrim part whatever we're up to. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Uh, and we Four. might actually get to Skyrim. <laughs> we're currently, we're currently no. on Solstheim, but Solstheim is in the game of Skyrim, so I'm saying it counts. It's also technically in the province of Skyrim at this point in time. Yeah, it's double Skyrim. So there you go. Uh, so sorry, what characters were you playing? You guys interrupted each other. Who so, would like to go first? I'll go first. Um, I'm playing Astrid, a Nord shield maiden. Um... Yeah, I'm basically Legatha from Vikings, and I'm really tough and strong, and I've got cool ice magic. That's me. I'm Jen. I am playing uh, the Khajiit name Azahari. I am a skooma drinking, moon sugar licking <laughs> thief of a Khajiit, and I'm pretty dang good at it. But I am very, very, very friggin' hurt. So I'm, I'm doing. I'm taking a good cat nap. You know how they always do? Like that. It's always that I am Khajiit. Like yeah. that's their voice. Yeah. I just want to hear that. Like, I'm as hard as I'm a schoolma, I'm a schoolma drinking moon sugar licking good old time gal. <laughs> now I'm going to need a yee for that half. <laughs> you see, all of this, all of this is elsewhere. What about that dark part? We don't go there. That's where the schoolma drinking moon this sugar licking live. Elsewhere and then just Texas stuck on the side of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, we love our Texan friends. Uh, go on. And I am playing Ferdinand, who is a Breton sort of mage minstrel guy who nobody appreciates in song form. Now has the nickname Easy Prey, which he utterly detests. It was one time. And a uh, little hurt, but, you know, I'm, I think people are coming around to me. That or they're just gone past the part of wanting to stove my head in. Well, despite any awkward banter and, j- like, you know, kind of jibing that you do to each other, you have been companions for, like, six months, so obviously yeah. something about your weird uh, sort of unified group works. Well, I you, thought it was the fact that, like, every time we tried to leave, it just yeah, failed horribly, yeah, so ev- we fell back and they're like, I guess this is it! So every <laughs> other group you've tried to run with, something's run afoul, or you've had some personality clash, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, you just kind of stuck together. Um... So, you are currently standing in a Dwemer ruin in the large what once was banquet hall. There is a smoldering ancient and probably priceless Dwemer tapestry that is uh, now sort of half charred and burnt away, uh, letting <laughs> a little glow. That's a good plan. That's uh, a good plan. And there is also a now broken into pieces and defunct and slightly sparking and steaming, but, but now completely going inert uh, Dwemer Sphere Centurion that you just fought and destroyed. And I believe you were... Con- oh, and you heard some doors yeah, opening yeah. and closing automatically and you realised that uh, the the constructs patrolling this ruin are not exactly easy to uh, avoid unless mm. you can sort of get somewhere secure. Yeah, yeah. And we heard a big-ass bear roar. Yes. Evidence of a were-bear. Yes. 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 Where bears were bears where? Where are bears? Um, I have a question. Do we gain some sort of awesome thing for having played sessions. Let's roll a destiny. <laughs> oh. You know what? The dice says 14 and that says you can have a destiny Yay. point. Yay. All of you. All of you have a destiny point. Thank you. Woo! I'm going to need it. Well. You will. So, <sighs> what are you doing? So, out of game? all... Can I perceive out of all the places that we have currently visited is there anywhere that seems like we could sleep not so far okay there are, you've passed there are three doors leading out of this room and there were two doors you passed that you didn't uh check because back in the previous corridor that went slightly down okay. yeah the, the stairs mm-hmm. was it and you were like down is is not good because it's more dwemery yeah. yeah doors go deep that was it sound logic yep so three in this room and then 
otherwise downstairs. Yes, I have a very badly drawn map. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Did in anything, you said doors were opening and closing. Yeah, deep in the moon. You can. Oh, not these ones. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. You just know that Dwemer constructs can automatically open the doors. <sighs> so, like, being in a room with a closed door mm-hmm. without it being locked or barred is not, like, safety from mm-hmm. yeah. these Roman Okey constructs. Okie dokie. Okay. Are there any other doors in the room that we're currently in, or is it Three. just the way? There's Three, okay. So this is the room that we're in. There's one about over around there. Then there's those two, and then we've exhausted pretty much everything okay. else, okay. except for those two. I love looking at your map and how it's different to my map, and oh, it just shows yeah. how spatial information is so hard to convey Today. without showing people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Plus, like, I mean, like, according to what I know, this is definitely wrong. So I'm going to show you. It's like, have you ever done the thing at school where someone gives you directions and you have to draw a map? And then it's completely wrong. <laughs> so that's where you came down with the broken chamber, and it's a corridor like that with two going down, and then it goes back. Why can't we see the map? We've been here. Why can't we? I don't understand. Yeah, it's like distinctly different. Anyway, so huh. as long as it works, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. fine. Um, uh, as a hurry is feeling pretty. Shit. Yes. Well, yeah. you're all much rougher than us, but we're all a bit rough at the mm. moment. Mm. We should find a place to rest. Well, hopefully the bear doesn't find it too. Mm. I'm going to go up to the middle door, assuming that uh, Ferdinand's map is correct. <laughs> yeah, so there is a door that was directly behind the large banquet yeah. hall. What is it? Uh, handle? It's a puzzle. Dwemer circular door, that o- a standard interior door. Check Just the open, opening, open, closey bad like boy. Make a trap checking minus, minus your two. injuries. Challenge uh, level, <gasps> not telling because it's a trap. Or is it? Exactly. So that's four dice. Wee. Nope. Ooh. You are certain that there no are traps. no traps. Heck yeah. Because I, you don't find any. I open the door. <laughs> All right. The door swings open with a, a loud. Does it kind of like open up like an iris or does it open no, up like a normal it's door? it's two swinging half circles. Oh, the two half circles. Rrr. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Oh. Great. Standard, boring. I peek my head in before I take a second. Okay, no. you hear the sound of... Uh, make a perception check, actually. Everyone, or just... Just as a hurry, she's the one with her head in the corridor. Five. Mm, two. Two. Okay, you hear the sounds of sharp metal feet clinking and clanking along metal floors. I close that door. Okay. <laughs> Both doors. They're, they're clink, clink. Uh, not this way. No, did, so we heard things moving. Did we hear them just moving, just in all directions? Yeah, just yeah. pass it. It was at the edge of your hearing. You just sort of in the in the quiet, the ambience you hear. They're like <laughs> of doors opening and closing, but like distant. You can't pinpoint where that where they are. Those were some great sound effects. Yeah, I that agree. Was, that, that I was, was impressed really by good. that. I've got to I'll work on my sound effects. Yeah. Turn to a rubmat messer. Yeah, one day. <laughs> Give me another ten years. Um, I pick another door. Yeah. Um, one to the left. Okay, so you're staying in the dining hall. Yep. Traps. At the moment. Um, Unless anyone else wants to do anything, of course. I'm gonna look down the corridor that we came in in case I hear the sound of bear paws. Make a perception check. Can I check this door, this door for traps? Yep. Oh, much better. Three. There are no oh, traps. Great. That's a number. That's good. Um, as far as I know, closing a Dwemer door doesn't just reset a trap, does it? Cause... Make a general knowledge check. Okay, First so of all, you don't hear any immediate bear sounds with three on your perception. And general knowledge is also affected yeah, by injuries. Yeah, uh, challenge level is probably four. It's possible. It's possible. Unfortunately, with... Nailed it. Whoa. So, <laughs> unfortunately, with the fact that you're in Dwemer ruins, like general knowledge is usually not that hard. It's just that Dwemer stuff is not general knowledge. It's like ruins. So, right. but with a four, you know, uh, unfortunately, the only semi-helpful information that some Dwemer traps are known to reset, some Dwemer traps do not, and it kind of comes back to a few things. One is it uh, is it a mechanical trap that once triggered. It, it stays in an in, like a triggered state. Uh, the second one is: is there a reservoir or something that like is supplying it? Uh, in the instance of this trap, you would assume with your general knowledge check, and I'm going to say that the door is still open behind you. That 
shutting the door would likely reset the trap because there is a large amount of steam, a large amount of electricity in a Dwemer Ruin. Everything in there is a replenishable magical resource. Mm -hmm. so. so with that information, do we want to keep... Uh, if we're going to keep going up around up here, I recommend we close that door because if the bear comes, it might get a little shock. Hopefully a large one. The one we came through? Yes, that hit yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Are we sticking around up here or are we going to go for the lower passageways? I guess. Astrid, do you want to... Yeah, can I, like, barricade the door that we came through? Just so nothing sneaks up on us. Uh, so the door you came through, you'd like to close, the one that will reset the trap to the corridor? Yes. With the two doors you haven't looked in. Just confirming before you reset the lightning yes. trap. Yes, are we yeah, sure? That's that what I'm asking. Oh, I trap. forgot that's the yeah. door we came through, just the yeah. lightning one. Yes, so do we want to go uh, and check those, uh, that down way and just see if it's a dead end or if it continues first? Let, let me check. I'm... Uh, I shall check the other trap, the other doors first. Which other doors? The two doors that we're currently in the room of. Oh yeah, you've checked one. Yes, yes. the one the on your left. Two. I checked for traps. Checked, yep, you've checked it. The only one you haven't checked is the one on the right for traps. Yes. So, so you've, uh, you've checked for traps the north door. Yes. And opened it. The west door you've just checked for traps. And would like to open. You'd it. like to open it. Okay. Uh, perception. Push the door open. Yep. And you don't need to make a perception check. You see, actually, I will get you to make a perception check. Challenge level for this is four. One, two, three. Hey, four. Yes. All right. Finally. You press open the door to the to the west, and it is a <coughs> short corridor, and all seems well and normal. There's electric lights, etc. Mm -hmm. One thing you notice is that the semicircular door, ever so slightly, is like not quite fully, fully, fully closed and is sort of just sl like, like it, it's closed, but you know, when you like close a door and the latch doesn't hook in, like it closes, yeah. but you, if you push it a little bit further, the, like actually the latch, it's kind of like that where it's not latched Or if I shut, pushed it, it wouldn't it, be locked. Yeah. If you yeah. pulled it, you wouldn't have to turn a handle. It yeah. would just pull open. Yeah. Um, is what you think. Yeah. But you also notice that there's a little pool of very narrow, very small pool of water. Very hard to see. It's actually just like a trickle of water uh, down at the base of the door. Is this on the other side on, of the corridor? Yeah, at the other end of the corridor. Um, I signal for you two to come over and I tell you what I see. All right. Do I have any idea? Like, I guess, no. You don't right. think it's another trap, do you? Yeah. Judging by what happened last time we saw a pool of water in mm. front of a door, yeah. I don't want to t open that well, unless there's like a leaky pipe and that's like blowing the door open. Yeah. Either way, I would prefer to not be anywhere near that pool of water if we open that door. It's, prob it's probably only about a run of like five centimetres. It's not like a across the floor. It's like a little trickle that's just gone down the side. So you'd, if you did go up to that door you could easily not be standing in the water. Like it's yeah. a little, it's like a, a half cup of water spilled on the floor. Should I check it? Well, how about we check the last door? We just see mm -hmm. what's behind it and then we can make a decision. Well, my question before we do that. So when you say it's like, it's like slightly open. Mm. Does it open, appear to open inwards or outwards? The Dwemer doors can go both ways. They're on a full 180 hinge. You could just like throw something at it and see if it opens from here. It's not a long corridor. And we can do it from probably standing outside the corridor in case. Wish. Cool. Who's I just did to like a chair or anything in the room. I, I, I find the. Uh, I grab the head of the Dwemer Sint. Sint um, <laughs> yeah. Dwemer heavy. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's heavy, but it's heavy. just the head. Okay, yeah. okay, I assume okay. it's enough to. If it hit the door, it would knock it open, <laughs> but also light enough that I can throw it with my point in strength. Okay, so make your throw Then check. I get it to Astrid because she has been... Well, <laughs> okay. she throws I'll Astrid. Throw. While you guys are doing this, I want to be like outside the door with my head poking in, okay. like on the first side in case it's just a wall of water. All right, you're throwing yeah, your head across the thing. <laughs> Five. Okay. Wait, is there a challenge on <laughs> Oh, well, she Never can't. Mind. Never mind. You peg this yeah. centurion's head across the room, just like just this. Just shot put shot it. Put it. Do, you, do you play football? <laughs> and you yeah, hear like a... <laughs> massive like steel echo as this head smacks into the door and then like uh smashes back lands and clangs across the floor of this room and uh the door rattles in its hinges 
a little bit. Uh, and as a Hari, you see a little bit of water towards the base of it just go f and just like ooze out of the bottom of it, but the door doesn't open. Oh. Oh, it doesn't open. Mm. This door is I, so judgy. I didn't know that, notice that though. Did as I? a Hari does. Oh, you can attempt a perception, but the challenge level is four, I believe I said yeah, for that chair. Correct, chair. yeah. Yeah, so as a Hari, <laughs> and you can as well, Astrid, but okay, if thanks. you want to, no, if you want to make a perception, oh, can you, make you can't see oh, it for free. You're damn. too busy making a bad for ass, like, baseball pitch uh, for like a 25 kilo head. One, yeah, two, you also three, don't three. notice the, the mm. little squirt. I will tell you that that's what has so, happened. So there was, a, the puddle of water was there and then the door moved back slightly and it was gone. The door just went and just shuttered and, and a little, little bit, bit of water trickled out the bottom mm. of the door. So there's oh. more water. Oh. Mm. Maybe that room's been flooded. I feel something. like Ferdinand is smart enough to understand that that likely means that there is a significant amount of water on the other side of that door. Ooh. Whether it was an intentional trap or whether it's just because it's now in a glacier and we've there could be ice in that room and we have now steam heated everything. Let's not open that door. Yeah, let's Probably try the last flooded. door. I, I have an idea, but I will check the other door first. Cool. Waddle yeah. on over to the other door. You want to waddle over to the <laughs> other check door. Check for traps. Yep. Waddle, waddle. There are no traps. Great. Uh, Wait, which other door is this? We already checked. We've checked every door in this room. Have we? Oh, you did that last time, and it just leads to. You've already got it written, so I'm guessing. Well, oh, we'll just do it. You open it, and we may be retreading old ground, but you open the door, and there is a collapsed tunnel with rocks filling the the corridor. So it's and a it's dead a dead end. end. In this side? Okay. The side that Can you... Oh, that was the... Oh, that, yeah. That's the flooded one. The other the side. Oh, so we haven't treaded. Yeah, oh. you yeah, open we, it we and there... We checked that one for traps, but we didn't open it. Oh, well, okay. you've now opened yeah. it and Great. it is a dead end. Great. Can this door and be... And based on your spatial awareness and perception, uh -huh. you would guess that this would have led directly through the path of the big ice cavern fissure that you climbed down. Mm -hmm. So it would have been heading sort of back towards that direction. So you're guessing that whatever shift uh, broke the other part of the ruin also broke this. Sure. Right. Okay. Can this door be locked or closed or locked? The one I've just opened. So at least the flooded. It, it can no. be closed. Yeah. It, if I wanted to sleep here yeah, Without magically locking it, you can't lock these doors. Okay, cool. There's no, no mechanism to lock these doors okay, okay. that you are familiar with. Cool. Well, it's funny you should say that. Because mm -hmm. alteration includes the lock spell. Mm -hmm. uh, but with no prompting, I'm not going to assume. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I... we start barricading, I might. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. I You've got that in your arsenal. I turn to you guys and I say, well, what if we got a rope? Change my accent again. <laughs> and tie it to the door and pull. The door's open. The ones with water behind them? Mm -hmm. Do we want to deal with all that water? Could be, safe. Question. Could be a safe place to sleep. Could be a very wet place. Just saying, I think it's like water up to the top of the door. So when mm -hmm, we open mm -hmm. that, it's going to hurt. Not if we stand like, so the, the door, assuming I'm correct, corridor door here, and then the door, the outdoor where we're standing mm. is here. If we pull, stay on either side, water comes out. I did, theoretically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot of water. Well, potentially. Yeah. You're it's like a literal water closet. This I, is I my can plan. understand yeah, both yeah, yeah. your perspectives because you're yeah. also in a very large dining hall. Yeah. This is so. this is my idea. Mm. Otherwise we continue back out. Yeah. yeah. So there's the, there's the, the things down which is in the direction of the bear. Or we can attempt to barricade the door on the other side because I assume it's not going to swing inwards, and even if it does, if we can manage to shove something in front of it, and then we can close that, so at the very least while we're resting, something can't get through that way, uh, can't get through from the door opposite to where we entered, and anything coming from the way that we did enter, we'll get electrocuted. The only benefit to opening the door with the water is we know theoretically there's nothing in there aside from water, theoretically. So if we did happen to open it, we wouldn't know there's monsters in there or enemies. I'm going to have, can I make a check to see if there is like a rope or anything in this room that would be good enough for us and long enough for us to pull? I mean, we have rope. Oh, do we? We've you had 
We rope. used it on the to get you in here to get a, you yeah, have all your the... rope tied together hanging from a rock. Yeah. Because there's no way you could have got yeah. that back. Oh, I'm gonna weird. destiny roll because that wasn't enough that because Azahari wasn't with you. Because you didn't have her I rope. Fell on yeah. my face. A four. Yeah. Okay, I'm right. gonna say Azahari has a rope. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. when you notice her rope, yeah, it's it's rope. However, it seems like she's clawed it <laughs> like a scratching post. So it's you you, you imagine that frayed. there's a chance that it would it will break if I look at my heavy nails. weight is put under it. <laughs> my claws. My... You're like, oh, you can use my rope, and we're like, oh, <laughs> don't think so. Uh, is there anything in this big dining hall that I could use to tie together, like a tablecloth or banners or anything? There was the tapestries. Hmm. I think the priceless tapestries. We should yeah keep the priceless tapestries for. Um, Razid. <laughs> okay, so probably there's bits and bobs that could assist, but there's not anything massively useful in this particular room. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you've got a frayed rope. Cool, cool. I, don't, I think telekinesis is mysticism, not alteration. I don't know. It's definitely not illusion. But I'm pretty sure it's mysticism. Well, I think... I don't know. Could we try the other mysticism. door? Mysticism. Yeah. Because I, I think we still need to keep clearing out this space. So do you want to just like, march forward towards where we heard the spider or do we want to try the yeah. stairs back there? Cause well, I think because, like, I'm I'm the one who's up for promotion. And huh. I'm, like, meant to, um, like, I feel like this would reflect on me. Um, yeah, this, like, adventure. So I feel mm. like I would march ahead. Mm, yeah, even, even you know, and ignoring the fact that I'm injured and that Azahara is injured. And as well. we're all injured. To be honest, oh, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like down there it was the reason that we originally passed that is because my suggestion was that's probably leads deeper. Yeah. But now we've walked past and we've seen this. It's like maybe it doesn't. So if we check that yeah. and we see that it continues, always go back for this later. But if it's a dead end, it's a dead end. It's a dead end with stuff in it. Then we rush back here. Going back. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so we go past the trap, which is not activated, hopefully, because okay. it activates on opening the door, and we can check that, and then if it's a dead end, we okay. can... Otherwise, okay. we go through that middle door, which has got yeah, 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 the stuff. Yeah, and then I have to start more map. <laughs> what are we doing? Yes. What are we doing, a fearless leader? Slight sarcasm. Yeah, you can oh, also thanks. you can also roll a destiny sometimes if you can't if it's difficult to make a decision. Yeah. Like, I say we march on ahead. All right, so through the door. Yeah. In that case, I close the door, Th this door, the one that led back. Yes. All right, it clicks into place, and with uh, a perceptible, okay. unless you're going to stop him, should you we not leave that stand? open in case the trap resets? Well, if the trap resets, then that means that anything coming from the other way gets hit, i.e., the bear. If the trap does reset and we open it from this side, as far as I could tell, there was no electricity on this side. Can I check okay. that? You say you've already made rolls for that trap, okay. so you just don't understand yeah. how it works. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but, like, I would have seen, like, because I opened it and then electricity happened, I would have seen if the electricity had happened on both sides. You don't know if it conducted through the door. We just uh, we're just scenario, the door. We can use that dodgy rope. And... Yeah. Okay. Fine. So you let him pull the door shut? Yeah. Okay. It clicks, and with a semi, almost imperceptible hum, you hear the sound of something winding up, like that high, <laughs> like a conductor, and then the sound of water starting to trickle and flow again. I'm totally going to forget uh, that. And the door is shut. <laughs> no one, yeah, no one forget that. <laughs> God. Okay. So where are you going? Uh, through the door at the end of the banquet hall, the far um, end. Yep. Can I... Oh, I, I turn to you guys and say, uh, would you like me to sneak ahead? Are you the sneakiest? Normally I would say yes, but... Oh, but own. no, but yeah, maybe not. Yeah. I forgot that feel, I'm very Are hurt. you feeling okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm... Yes. Stealth? Dang it. Yeah, look, I'm feeling pretty confident. Did, I, I feel very confident. Yeah, yeah, I feel confident. Okay. All right. Go ahead then. So we're gonna go through the door. Yeah. 
mm-hmm. door opens. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> um, and I'm just going to try and sneak in and, and see if I can see what yeah, I can make see. Make a stealth check. I see the sea. One, two, three, four. One, two. Nice. Finally, you okay. Hit from you head into the corridor, and you hear at the end of the corridor on the left hand side, and like, of feet. And you just happen to have timed it well enough and you're sneaking well enough that the patrol is currently not in the corridor you're in. Uh, it goes left and right. It goes left and right only about 20 metres to the left, 20 metres to the right. There are three doors, one at each end, one in the centre. Uh, so there's a door basically... Dri- oh, I should have said you have to go up, uh, up, sort of like a regular single floor flight of stairs worth of stairs. You go up the stairs and then you reach this corridor with the... Left door, right door, middle door, directly in front of you. Oh, and so where are they goes. going? Left door. And left you have door. the feeling that in, they've gone through the left door just as you've kind of gone. Oh, okay. Um, Whatever I, was patrolling. I'm going to sneak back and pop my head down the stairs and kind of gesture for you guys to come up. <laughs> we follow. <laughs> just footsteps. Oh, I thought <laughs> the spider was going back. I'm like, no. It's, you can hear it walking. Yeah. Be, oh, I said, you said it. You did. You assume they go. God, I bought a drone stealth. It's still moving, so it's just gone through that oh, door. Okay, you don't okay. know how big. You don't know how big the room is. You don't know how big, how long you've got. You can just yeah. Hear I tell. I just suggest for you guys to come up. Um, and I kind of try very hardly to be like and point to the left. Okay. <laughs> and then go like. <laughs> and they get to the left. Try, try to make sure that you guys sort of understand me. Okay. Yeah. Whether you do perceive what I'm telling you. Okay. Just uh, release steam. steam near you. So then I go like forward or right, but like just pointing. Um. Can I look at both? Identical doors. I just go ahead and go straight for the one that's ahead of us. Yeah. Sneakily, obviously. Okay. You sneak up to it. Do you open it? Ah, uh, check for traps. Okay. <laughs> One. There are no traps. I <laughs> I turn around to you guys. I give like a pause out. And I'm like, <laughs> but like, are we going through it then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I open the door. Okay. <laughs> you open the door. So as Ahari touches the door and pulls the door open, make an endurance check. Yeah, it's a two, two successes. Yay. Okay. You hear a weird noise and there is like a blast of green energy magic. And as oh. a is standing there with a the door like sort of two inches apart. Green. Just frozen. <laughs> completely frozen. She, oh, she's frozen. She's oh, completely okay. frozen. Oh, damn. I gesture to move up and then I attempt to... Like, I slam the door shut. No, I is it the energy's coming from the door? It yeah. came from the door. Came from the door. I attempt to open it further. Okay. Uh, uh, if possible, without breaking Azahari. Yeah, it's Azahari's hands are like in the handles holding it, uh, and she is immovable. But you can attempt a strength check. Challenge level is going to be pretty high. I'm going to say it's four. So when you say Could strength, this is grip. Uh, yeah, I'll go grip. Could Astra assist? Yeah. Yeah, Astrid could assist. If you wanted to, of course. One is... No. Okay. I don't think so you I can... Do the grip. Su- yep. it, was, it was grip, yeah. yeah. I don't think you can succeed enough. F- made it worse, but that's fine. Sorry. It's, it's, uh, only, <laughs> negative. it's uh, only negative. Yeah, so not, there's no ramifications to this. So basically, between the both of you, you, you attempt to pull the door open, and, and uh, Azahari is basically almost a functioning like a solid stone lock between the two. Like, her form is completely rigid <laughs> and holding the two bits, and it's okay. like an inch open, and you can just see a crack through it into what looks like a small chamber. Can I look, make a perception check into the chamber? At the On the left, at the end of the corridor, you hear, hear the sound of a Dwemer door swinging open. I'm just going to hope that this runs out quick enough, but I would like to look into the room ahead. What are you casting? Sorry, or what are you doing? I'm trying to peek through the crack. That's all right. Two. 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 
The, you have a very narrow window of vision into the room. What you can tell is the room is small. It's no more than like uh, probably like four by four meters. Uh, there's you see destiny roll. There's no furniture or no distinguishing features that you actually see. You just have like a narrow window, and all you see is the wall on the other side of the room. There's a rug in the floor, on the floor. Yeah. Um, that's it. I, I brace for the, the creature that's uh, coming yeah, from the yeah, left Yeah, prepared a surprise attack. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, you have no surprise on this thing because it was notified by the trap going off. Um, but it rounds, you see a Dwemer spider, a uh, Dwemer spider centurion uh, round the corner about 20 meters away from you. Okay. And it stops in its tracks. Do it. Mess it up. Let's do it. I throw my axe at it. Okay. And you declare throwing an axe? Yeah. What I are you doing? Wait for it to get closer. Okay. So that I can smack it. So you're like holding to hit it if it comes. Yep. So you're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say you're taking the brace action. Yeah, that works. If it were to declare a charge. Yep. However, it is not. Uh, the back of it just swells up and then it goes <laughs> and shoots uh. this magical energy straight down the corridor. Uh, and it actually has... You guys are, like, right next to each other, yeah? Yeah. Well, it's got radius, so I am going to make its magic check. Mm. Uh, endurance checks for you. Challenge level three. Uh, you will have neg one off whatever... Da if it does damage, it'll be neg one for you. Two. Oof. Okay, so oh, two. I'm so fine. you negate it. You ignore it. This bloom of poison Oof. flies over you and... One, two, three, and you, four. You both actually shrug oh, do I need to do it? off it... the effects as a hurry as well. Yeah. Uh, but you, <laughs> yeah, you take a level one injury as this. So I'm at three, is that correct? Uh, three level, you've got a level two and now a level one as well. Yeah, but so if we have a spare potion, both. but yeah. we don't because we've chucked them both. So you have neg three off your rolls, oh. yeah, but you yeah. have a level two injury and a level one injury. <laughs> Ah. And you throw your axe, I make a axe. combat roll. It makes it just a raw defense roll. Uh, you are chasing four to do damage, more than four to do damage to it. It does, um, it has high reflexes. Uh, oh no, yep, well done. No, you. what have you got? I got none. Then yes. Astrid's got one. Oh, it's same as Astrid. It's five and then I do throw? Uh, you can do your throw to assist, yep, with these throwing attacks. So that was five hits. Yeah, would that potentially make it worse, though? Uh, well, when you're throwing your axe, I've been making you do it, so you don't yeah. have a choice. Okay. Uh, One, two, but three, it makes four. it better. Nice. So you actually get a level two victory. Nice. What would you like to do with your level two victory? Uh, just do a medium injury, or you can stagger it. Stagger. Uh, well, yeah, stagger is level one. Yeah, just injury. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you throw it, and the front plate of armor on it, the axe just smashes into it, yeah. And it buckles and breaks, twists, and then like peels off and flies into the room with a clatter of metallic sounds as it scrapes across the floor. And its primary armor plate has just been completely destroyed and removed. And uh, yeah, its bellows are exposed and it starts to up the corridor towards you. Okay. Does it get within range? Uh, not this turn. Damn. So your, unfortunately your action is wasted, bracing. Um, yeah. Can I charge at it or something? Yeah, so we'll go to the next okay. round. Yeah. Uh, so everything, you're the fastest, so you declare last. Okay. How long does my paralysis last? You are last? still paralyzed. Okay, cool. cool. <laughs> does it have a nozzle or something that it shoots this out of, or does it just like... It just it ma it's magic. Just dang. Um, I will not charge, but I will walk up to it and attempt to take a leg yes just re regular combat uh okay so it uh what are you doing oh, it declares next it as you start advancing and your intentions are the most clear it actually charges uh ferdinand who will be in front because you've got the slow reflexes so it sees you like motion to take the lead over astrid and it's going to charge at you astrid what are you doing i will charge at it you will charge it, it in. Attack it with my other axe. Okay. So um, basically you're all going to smash into combat at the same time together. We're going to hurt. Uh, and yeah. This room better be worth it. 
<laughs> Seems empty with a rogue in the middle. So I'll roll its combat roll. Uh, it's charging Me. against you. So it gets a plus one. Four successes. Disgusting. Go for it in hand. One, two, three, four. Four successes. Oh, and Astrid, it, and you get plus one dice for charging as well. Okay. So I matched it, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, thank God. One, two, three, four. But it only had three. It's only three. Four. No, it's four. No, it's not. Oh, Where's no, it's a four? three. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> From here, like a four. So you guys all just smash into each other in this like whirl of blades and slicing spider legs. <laughs> and throughout, in yeah. <laughs> through the bargain, uh, no one is injured. You, you kind of clash into each other and then sort of uh, Astrid's axe comes down and it deflects a claw that was going towards Ferdinand. And Ferdinand, um, you swing your blade out to take a leg, but it parries it with its like front claws and pushes your blade into the ground, scrapes across the floor. You lift your blade back up to ready and you're all impassively standing as Azahari is just looking straight forward, <laughs> completely frozen, hearing this sound. He's just waiting for it to be just like a dwarven centurion just starts approaching the... <laughs> just like... <laughs> so we're going to do another round of combat. Okay. It Ooh. gets one success. Yay. So you guys are going to you guys are going to pull it apart, I reckon. Yes. Sounds good. One, two, two three, three, four. Three, level three victory. Hooray! And Astrid. Level three is true. One, two, three. Yeah, correct. Three and a level two. I'm going to say with a level two and a level three victory, how did the two of you want to do this together? Just. You got kind of comboing like killing this thing. Fillet the legs. Yeah, just yeah. Like leg here, leg there, leg here, leg there. Yeah, yeah. So, um,. As it rears up and claws again towards Ferdinand, uh, you deftly pull your blade back and then stick it straight between a joint, like right in the weakening of the joints, right as Astrid's axe swings across the front of this spider. And as they're like, the legs are sort of pinned in motion by your sword blow, her axe comes in like a hammer and just smashes across the front of this thing and sends three of its limbs just spiraling into the air and clattering into the walls. Uh, one of them, uh, one of them smacks into Azahari, but gently doesn't hurt you, but you feel this clump. <laughs> the first indication anything's happened is this uh, centurion leg hitting you and like falling to the ground. Uh, and then as it sort of like rears back with three limbs uh, discarded, as a, uh, Astrid's axe just cleaves into the top of it. And then with this like first swing lifts back, Ferdinand blade dive in, finish it. And the spider just collapses, nice. completely destroyed. Nice. Nice. Then I guess Sorry. we just wait for Azahari to start <laughs> I, moving yeah. and just sitting there. Just like... uh, it takes a full minute. Uh, and then Azahari, you slowly feel your movement come back as the paralysis <laughs> trap do I realize, empties away. Do I realise I've been paralysed? Yeah, it's just, you knew yeah, it was... You were like... You literally... I don't know why, but in movies all the time when people get magically paralyzed, they could, their eyes can move. No. In fact, the first thing you notice is your eyes are burning. You wish mm -hmm. you could have blinked, but you couldn't <laughs> blink for the last minute. So you kind of like blink the water through your eyes a bit. Uh, and then, yeah, no, you were just frozen in place for a full minute. Able right. to hear, mm -hmm. able to see, but all you could see was straightforward. I kind of like still have my hands on the door and turn around, see what you guys have done. And I'm like, good work. Oh. <laughs> no worries. Uh, Finally open the doors. <laughs> You all right? Yeah. Did everything all right? Yeah. We finally yeah. open the doors yeah. and we see an empty room with a rug in it. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, because you were looking through a small, like an inch. That's all you had. So when the doors fully swing open, you see that you're looking into what looks like Dwemer living quarters. There is a bed laying there and any uh, semblance of a mattress uh, that was on it has long since decayed and rotted uh, through to the floor just with age. But you're not even really sure that the Dwemer used mattresses. Uh, it just looks like slabs of stone. There is a, a footlocker at the end of the bed. On the right side of the room, there is sort of like, a, a large wardrobe and a counter, and it just looks like someone's room. Okay. I want to search the room. All right. Uh, make a perception check. So you fosk around the room. Uh, I would like to slip inside the room, gesture for you to follow, and then close the door. Okay. Only two successes. Two successes. Destiny roll. Ten. Okay. So nothing amazing. 
uh, you open up and you find some what, Dwemer clothes uh, that are ancient beyond any value, like fallen apart, moth-eaten by 2,000 years sort of thing. Um, and it's not very interesting. You, you know, you go through the wardrobe, there's nothing exciting in there. Uh, you go to the table and the chair and there's like paper that's degraded it actually it seems like there there was a pipe leak and it's, it's over time it, like the tables all stained and any of the books and paperwork mm. are just mulch rotten mulch on the table uh you open up the foot locker and again you rifle through it and there's just nothing uh and as you rattle at the as a last bit of instinct from your thieving background there's an old uh just a like a slipper a bit of footwear and you kind of rattle it around and you realize there's something heavy in it. And just in a moment of f fuck this slipper, mm -hmm. you just rip this decaying slipper open mm -hmm. and two emeralds fall out of it Whoa. and just like clank across the ground. As it seems that whoever lived here was like hiding a little bit of their wealth in their shoe out of paranoid mm -hmm. reasons. But um, nothing that will immediately help your adventure, but yep. certainly some emeralds. I take them and put them in my pocket. Cool. <laughs> I say, find us, keep us. Well, I mean, this is one way in, one way out. It's kind of small. There's a rug. There's a bed that we could put a bedroll on. Do we want to try and take a rest here? Seems is like that it. as good a place as any? Is that wardrobe like one of the ones that's like it's a Dwemer one made out of stone and it's stuck there, or is it one of those like it's a heavy ass metal wardrobe made out of Dwemer steel? It's a heavy ass metal wardrobe made of Dwemer steel, and. Even the three of you together wouldn't be able to lift it. Damn okay. it. Uh, what it, about the... It the, would weigh at least a ton. What about the crappy bed frame? Is that quite heavy? With a well? lot of effort, maybe. But remembering the Dwemer, Dwemer bits of metal, it's just so heavy. Like a Dwemer ingot like this would weigh like 50 kilos or something mm, stupid. Right. So the bed is just ridiculously heavy. But if we, if we close the door again, it'd be trapped, right? No, Don't this know. is the kind of expendy trap oh, where okay. it's likely just a one and done. It, it, okay. it, it depends on whether it's a magical thing that's sat there or whether it's something that can reset. Like, mm -hmm. but so yeah. is there anything heavy in this room, but not heavy enough that the three of us together can? A chair, the, the, the foot locker? chair, the a foot locker. Person. Maybe you could drag it across the room. I mean, the the furniture is all made of like a Dwemer crappy alloy. It's not the pure Dwemer steel, mm. so it's not mm. actually worth anything. The furniture is not worth much, but um, it is very heavy mm. but you can move yeah. the footlocker and the chair yeah, yeah. sure yeah. We, we however given that you know that Dwemer doors open both ways on their hinges it won't barricade they it they could trip on could the footlocker it <laughs> it's enough yeah. to slow them down and take cover behind if it's a spider yeah <laughs> oh, a chair and a footlocker I guess a Dwemer spider centurion but probably not they would just scrabble over it yeah but at the very least it, it buys it'll minorly time. delay them yeah yeah sure can we just keep watch actually you Instead. said there were handles on this door are there handles mm. on both sides of this door? Yes. Well, Ch sort of. Chair under the handles, because that way... It's, they're not like that. They're like, uh, they're like a recess that you push your hand uh, it, into and open and close. It's not like a door So handle. you can't... You can't oops. wedge anything under it. What if... And you uh, also know they can open without being touched magically. Yes, but if you wedged something in there, yeah, then if it pushed no. against it, it would. And if they tried to pull it, they'd have to also pull the weight of the furniture. This particular type of door is very, very difficult to deal with. There are other types of Dwemer doors that aren't, but I these circle doors, yeah, they I, open on both ways. There's no obvious way to lock them. So it's not specified. If I cast lock on this door, yep. Do we then have to lock pick it, or because I cast it, can I just go like stopping? No, you locked? have to use unlock, or you have to lock pick it. That's so and stupid. And <laughs> what's even more annoying is these particular doors. You have to cast lock on twice. You have to cast it on each side of it. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, um, I, I I know that's super annoying, but I'm going off how, does how that it even works. Work because then because they don't the way they lock is actually in the wall. It's like a mechanical mechanism in the wall because it's on a hinge, but the hinge is motorized. But then you'd have to find another way to get into the room because then how do you lock a door from the outside without finding another way inside? What do you mean? You're saying you have to lock it on both sides, right? No, oh, so on both sides is in the left half of the circle door and the oh, right half of the uh, circle door. I think we've had this conversation yeah. before. <laughs> um, and you know what else is great? You can also have magical traps on one half, but not the other. 
That's stupid. Oh, I'm going to open the doors one at a time. <laughs> yeah, okay. So okay. I, I'm not going to do that. Like, if, it, if I might have, if it was just, like, because I cast, like, like, I know in the game it's that way, but I would think in... No, I'm, I'm, I'm playing these the doors the yeah. annoying way. And the way I'm justifying it is you're actually seizing the mechanism in the wall. Okay. So you can seize one side, but not the other. If you found a door where, like, one was broken, then you'd only need to do one, but... But then yeah, no, room. I'm just... If there was, like, a safe room that was designed about, for you to sleep in that had, like, a special door that had a locking mechanism... What about, like, you a, could use that. a bucket of water? Convenient. Or, like, a bucket of water on top of the door and then if open the door, <laughs> no. it'll fall on them. And then we'd all wake up. <laughs> um, that seems no like more You know when you sleep, a... you get mana back, right? Yeah. yeah, but that's also assuming we... Uh, well, if, if I you know, get a... So the justification can, is to rest in here long enough to cure wounds. And I can... You'll probably get the yeah, mana I will like to cast... One. But then you need to cast unlock on half of one. That's all. Or it's I can... necessarily. You can pick it. I can pick it, yeah. You, that's true. You can. I don't I, know how that'll work, but it'll work. I would like <laughs> to cast lock on you both hands. Your lock pick set also has some WD-40 that you squirt in yeah. the air. <laughs> we're we're going to be there a while, would doesn't you, it? Would you like me to roll twice? Uh, so that one door is not quite as locked you know as what? the other? I will get you to only for the strength of the lock. You automatically succeed in casting it. Um, so, it so for the left half, yep. from our side, yep. is okay. one, three, two, three. Level three lock. Lovely. And for the right half yep. on our side, it is one, two, level three, three lock. Oh, nice. It's level three lock. So Ferdinand, describe how you magically lock these doors and what it looks like. Uh, a thing of purple magic just in his offhand as he puts the sword away, spreads it over to both hands, walks over to the door, looks at the mechanism, looks at the middle of it and goes, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> After this twice, walks over to the left one, runs his hand along the outside of it, and it sort of just like looks like it rusts a little, but it's only superficial. Yeah. And then repeats on the other side, so it like seizes it in place instead of like flipping a latch and then magically sealing it yeah. in place. Yeah, and look, you guys get the uh, everything seems kind of counterintuitive and dumb and doesn't make make sense. That it works, um, but it's probably just because your societal frame of reference is different. Mm. These Dwemer. Uh, like if a Dwemer was wearing like an enchanted necklace or something, he would walk towards his room and the door would just open for him and then the door would close behind him and lock. Yeah. So like all the reasons that are awkward now, back when they lived here, it was just the height of convenience. Yes, of right. course each side is motorized. Because, you know, like, yeah. So it's, it's the modern one of like, if the power went out, sliding doors suddenly yeah. go from being like, oh yeah, to... Exactly. Mm. So you've locked the doors magically. You're in this small dwemer ruin. What would you like to do? Sleep. Curl up on the rug. Curl up on the ru <laughs> ru old ancient rug. Yep. Okay. How long would you like to wait in here? How long until I get my magic back yeah, and I'll... we recover our injuries? You don't know. That is a. Ah. We would like to. Well, you can press until healed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Eight so hours. For Azahari to heal a medium uh, at, at level two injury will require. I think it's. I think it's like two to three days for that oh, to geez. disappear. Oh, jeez. All right. Um, for the minor injury, a short rest of like an hour will get rid of it. Um, that just puts me back still in two days. If right? you stay the equivalent of a whole mm. evening, like a night, I will allow you to reduce your injury to level one, but I won't make it a level one injury. So what I mean by that is you still have... The a medium injury, the but it will only give you negative one instead of negative two. So it's not, because right. I'm not reducing it, because then you just go, I rest for 10 more minutes and it's gone. So you kind of have half yeah. healed that injury. Uh, I think an eight hour rest, because we've been marching for a while. Yeah, you've been out all day. Yeah. Yep. Did we have a time frame when, when we had to report back? Not really. No, remember. you're on your own. I think so. Oh, okay. Would that, burn, would we're my in injury heal as well? Yes. We've got one. Yeah. yeah, you just have okay. a one. So sorry, if I sleep for the eight hours and then more, you'll no, reduce... No, eight the, hours will reduce it. I'll reduce let you reduce the penalty. It. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so you're going to rest for eight hours. I want you to all make an endurance check. Level... Uh, you are looking at challenge level one. Is this before we heal? Uh, or do we get our dice back? This is to see if this sleep is restful in this un uncomfortable, horrible environment. I can't make the roll. Challenge you level can't. one. You can't a succeed. One. Challenge level one. I will spend a destiny point. 
No! I probably do the same. Okay, Astrid, you make it. This is not a comfortable place. And you make it too. So everyone who succeeded <coughs> heals and gets a full restore. I am back. How much you get your mana I have? back? I, got I think you have five uses, don't you? Four. Cool. So you I get it all back. If you want it to be five, yeah. you get it all back. <laughs> it's four. Okay. Yay. You're all rested. You're, so now we're only left with four restores as Ahari has a negative Minus. one. But a level yes. two injury. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yay. My sleep was eight not. Hours pass. My sleep was not very restful during these eight hours. No, you had to like force yourself to rest. <laughs> Perchance mm. to I don't know if this would count as sort of like failing forward or just perhaps because it was destiny and maybe something happened. Did I hear something that kept me awake? It was yes. like a clock. So you heard <laughs> a very irritating repeated mechanical noises groaning of metal but you also heard the sounds sort of like just as you're about to go to these two passed out after like an hour an hour into your time just about to go to sleep and you hear the sounds in the very distant through metal and walls of like loud scratching and movement and then you heard like a roar of like a bear like roar that immediately sort of darted you up and then made you on edge and feeling unsafe for most of the evening mm. um but after some time as if fate intervened, uh, you did fall asleep. And you think it's because a pipe burst or something weird happened, a bit of movement in the ruins that hadn't been happening. And all this really irritating stuff, like two hours into your attempted rest, this pipe just split. And then it was just this like, constant, reliable gray noise that just kind of deadened out the rest My of it. Songs. And just let you go to sleep. <laughs> and you finally got your rest. Yeah. And yeah, you you awake <sighs> somewhat refreshed. You all have like sore backs and crooks in your neck, but you know. As a Hari like does some cat stretches. They must have had amazing mattresses. <laughs> like my. Did anyone sleep on God. the bed? The bed. Or did you sleep on the floor? Because so, when you said bed frame, <laughs> it's like metal bars with like a foot gap between each one. Yeah, sleeping on that without a mattress, like you had to put a bedroll on, but without a mattress, that's yeah, it's a nightmare. That would be terrible. <laughs> that's why I was asking if anyone. No, no, you're no. sleeping on a rug. <laughs> okay, yeah. Because when, when you said it, I pictured the Skyrim Dwemer beds, which is a slab of stone. Yeah, no, these are this is Morrowind style Dwemer beds. Like an old school it's, bed frame. It's, but it's an old school bed frame yeah. made of metal. <laughs> mm. No, I slept on the. Specifically yeah. on the rug, I took the rug. In fact, yeah. it was a lot. Uh, you you will see if you keep going. There's a little bit of an Easter egg in this place, but anyway. When you say this place, you mean this? The room. whole ruin, yeah. A <clears throat> um, ruin, yeah. Possibly. Um, all right, so uh, surging forward again, fearless leader. Mm. Back at it. Back cool. at it. Let's do it. You head to the doors. They're locked. I go to lock pick the door. Make <laughs> a uh, sleight of hand. What we, what have you got? Lock, lock picking. Lock picking. Specifically? Yeah, that's more specific. Uh, challenge level three. Minus yep. one. One, two, three. <laughs> the left side clunks. I do uh, not open the you right side. Like scrape your lock pick down the side, and the magical starts to dissipate. And you are, uh, yeah, you get your magical double D, WD forty and your little pin, and you sort of stick it in the hinge, and Heck it yeah. starts working and slides open. And you you distinctly feel at a certain point when when picking magical locks that. The magic is is metaphysical, but there's also like physical elements, almost like pressure points to it. And as you get your pick into this point in the mechanism, it's like it's popping a boil of this magical pressure point, and the magical rust that had gone up the side just like and just disappears, just explodes and dissipates. That's cool. Uh, and then the yeah. door swings open. Very cool. Bear. <laughs> cool. Oh yeah! Before I actually open the door, can I press my wonderful cat ear and make like, perception check? Yeah. Okay. Six. It's a good news. What caused your injury again? It was the, the bear, the, the claw. thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. You have uh, so your wounds have kind of co coagulated and sort of matted fur has uh, sealed them up a little Game. bit. But you have these large, like scabby yeah. gashes across. I you. gave him a good lick before. All right, went to bed. <laughs> what are you trying to it's listen for with level three? And anyone walking past. No, cool. that seems quiet. All right, yeah, then I'm happy. You open the door. We <laughs> are. Weird Dwemer door noise. Okay, so there's a door to the corridor. Like, right. Doors yeah. or little corridors? Left and right. It's Left just right. the one corridor with three doors coming off it. Okay. Yep. So do we want to go where that spider was patrolling or do we want to 
see if something opened the trap door before we go on, or...? Mm. We are here, we may as well. The right. checks. Yeah. I walk up to a door. I check for traps. Okay. I pull out a coin and... Is this the one that the spiders... There's the no pose. traps, Jen. <laughs> I'm just deciding which one it is. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. We went the way that the spider was not patrolling. Okay. okay. And there was no I traps. Landed on heads. Cool. There was no traps. Open the door. You open the door and you get shot with light. No, it's, there's no trap. <laughs> so. uh, the door swings open and mm-hmm. you look into a small Dwemer bedroom. Much the same Does as the it, one you just oh, I was going to say. Yeah. Slightly, <laughs> slightly different configuration of where their personal belongings I are. I go in and loot it. Make perception. Check. Is there no specific lo- Oh, no. I was yeah, gonna say, no. if you get paralyzed again, I swear. To God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, paralyzed is superior to dead in every way. Yeah, that's true. Two successes. Two? Oh, again? Okay. You leaf around the room and you find uh, eventually on the wardrobe there's sort of like three. Uh, there's a full set, a Dwemer pitcher and four Dwemer goblets that are of good quality. They're heavy. They are heavy, but they are good loot. Could just leave it Definitely here. something you could come back for. It won't be yeah. useful yeah. to us now. Yeah, yeah. Def- when, yeah. when we get like the full scale operation in here, we just yeah. as a hurry does it. Yeah. Mm. Cool. You head back to the other door. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. This is the one that the spider was walking in and out. That of. is the one. One, two, four three, successes. Four. There are no traps. Open the door. Cool. Door swings open, and you look into a Dwemer bedroom. Oh, <laughs> no. Largely similar, uh, largely similar to the I one you were just in. I check it. Make a perception check. <laughs> Harry's getting he's having off. deja vu. Yeah. <laughs> Two successes. <laughs> Astrid, I would like you to make a perception check. Okay. As a hurry's grumpy. As a hurry's <laughs> rifling through all these rotten clothes, like this place sucks. <laughs> Astrid, three successes. But Astrid notices something while your head is down because nobody ever looks up. Of course, yeah. And you're like rifling through boxes. And you're just standing there watching and Astrid looks up and on the wall in the centre of the room, uh, you see in the way people hang crests that there is a ornate looking uh, Dwemer shield on a wall. Like a large shield up on a, yeah, up on like a cresting mount. I take it. Cool. You reach up. And yeah. I'm going to get you to make this. I only make you do this once. I'm going to get you to make a strength athletics check to equip, wield, carry this shield. Okay. Challenge level is going to be three. Surely you're higher than that. I'm off four. Oh, though. you're unskilled in athletics. Yeah. Tell you what, I'll let you use grip because it's grip strength. Okay. Is this Come on. What did you One, need? Two. She needed three. You like, can, I use a destiny. Yeah. You use a destiny? Really like okay. So at first, you this this shield, you pull it off the wall and it's very heavy. Um, and even though you're strong, you you just get the sense that it's too heavy to wield in combat. It's, it's not effective for you. But then as you just try it and test it and you fit your hand into the grip and you try a few different techniques you've seen, you realize that it's actually more that the the method of wielding the shield defensively is um, not the same as your shield. Yeah. So your shield, you might fight more like a buckler grip. This is more like a tower shield grip where it goes against your arm, just feels a bit different. And you remember your training and you know that you do know how to wield that even though it's not what you're familiar with. And uh, with that sort of spark of inspiration, you figure out how to wield the Dwemer shield. Hell yeah. That's a pretty cool looking shield. Thank you. Is it like, is it better than the shield that I've got or are they like the same? The Dwemer shield is going to operate in a very special way. The Mm -hmm. Dwemer shield only offers one armor, just the same as your regular shield. Okay. The Dwemer shield, however, uh, you can choose after using it once as regular armor, that's fine. After that point, you can choose to subtract one from your combat roll, unless you have endurance to compensate for it, uh, to then have that one point of armor continually. So, like, even though you've used the... Because armor can only use once per fight. Yeah. So you you can use the armor point, yeah. and then from the next round onwards, you can 
subtract one from your dice pool to then keep having one armor and ah, use it infinitely. So like cool. every time you get hit, you will have one armor less. point. Yeah. So take one less damage. You do risk a dice, so it's like a 50-50 chance of gaining. Yeah. Um, but you can opt to do that. So yeah. And it changes every turn. So you could go, this turn, I'm feeling like it's, it's beating me. I want the armor, so you just take one dice out. Yeah. Or you can be like, no, I'm on the advantage, so I will just like hold it limply at my side and fight. And yeah. the idea of that is basically like, it's the Dwemer steel is so good that it, it can hold up to being pounded repeatedly, yeah. but it's so heavy, it's exhausting to use in combat for a prolonged period of time. And this is just a regular Dwemer shield, it's not magically enchanted okay. or anything like that. I was like, you said ornate Dwemer shield, and I'm like, it's a nice, it, it's a nicely like, crafted. Is it? I know of an artifact that is a Dwemer shield. <laughs> I'm like, did you? No, it's not the special one. This is probably a dumb question, but armor doesn't like replenish after. It does after stuff. each fight. After each so fight. every fight, oh, okay. you can use your armor. So Strength I've got is four armor now. So you have so had three still. Yeah. You had three. What's your endurance? Seven. Seven. Uh, total, sorry, so two, two points. points. Oh, so sorry. you're currently you have no negative for using your armor, but um, so basically, yeah, what will happen is your armor stays exactly the same. You have three okay. per combat, but if you use your three in the combat, you can then opt to keep having won every round. If oh, you so you don't it. take any health if, if it were to... Yeah. Right, okay. We'll, we'll recover it again Ooh, if we yeah. go into combat okay. and if you use your armour. But basically, it is better than your current shield. Hmm. This is great. I turn to Ash and say, finders keepers. Finders keepers. I'm just sort of sitting there leaning, looking at the <laughs> door. Like, no, I'm not even watching you guys. I'm like letting you guys loot, but I'm keeping an eye on the door that we came in here. And I was like, all right, so flooded hallway... Mm. Or trigger the trap again and head downstairs. Assuming that nothing oh. triggered it in the night. Destiny mm. roll. Nine. Think. Yes. Uh, as a hurry thinks maybe. As if I was going to help you out or not. We go past the door. Something may have changed. Let's yeah. The, let's the, go check out the, the door. Flooded door. Yeah. Flooded yeah. door. All right. Right, you head back there and nothing's changed. Okay, okay great. Uh, it is risky. I checked it for traps already, didn't I? Yep, maybe. No, you didn't no. go up to Can this I? door. You just threw a head into it. I want to <laughs> check it for traps <laughs> now. Now I'm feeling a little bit better. <laughs> Three. You... Cannot see any traps. Are you fine trapsing us? No. Okay, good. Like, are you, are you doing the whole, like, that's a dodgy bit of floor, but it wasn't engineered as a trap, so it's not a trap. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. Good. I was just deciding okay. on, um, yeah, there's no traps. There's I definitely no traps. Okay, I, I, I was going to say something, and I realized what I was going to say was giving you information that was unrelated to checking for traps, so that's why I didn't tell you. Okay, okay. It's something that I'm going to do later, but you go on. Okay, I have a few questions. One, can I put my paws on the handles mm -hmm. and kind of test to feel like, is there pressure behind this door, or would that open it? That would open it. Okay, won't do that. Second thing, how tall is this hallway? Standard size for a Dwemer corridor, so okay. like... Nine foot tall. I'm gonna roughly attempt to see if I can eight foot maybe. Like pitch myself up, like senpai stand up the top of the wall. Like, can I climb the wall and stand up? Corridor is probably too wide because they have these big, dark, large double. So doors. Even, even if I face the corner up and I jump if up, you and were like horizontally <laughs> pressed, like feet to it with <laughs> yeah, but okay. the sideways one probably not. You can you know what acrobatics challenge level four. <laughs> This is going to be funny. Oh, oh I got three. Oh. Azahari deftly, like, attempts to do this thing and manages to, like, get... You, you like, test... You, you stretch mm. out, you test yourself in this corridor as many times as you can. Eventually, you get to a point where you realise that horizontally, you can just, like, press against it with your feet and your paws stretched out to full, and you're like, I can't. Okay. I can't mm. climb up and, and do then, anything useful with this. Okay, last question. <laughs> can I, like put my hands out and if I go if I think that the door is going to open is there a gap in between does it flat 
sorry. So if I open this door, will it sit flat to the wall? It or is there a gap? It will hinge back all the way to the wall. It will hinge all the way back to the wall. Uh, okay. There will be a little gap behind it, a little triangle of space. But it would squish me if I were to be in there. Your, as a hurry's light enough, you could fit in that gap. Uh, it could hurt you if anything would have violently pushed the door open. Yep. Oh. Like torrents of water. Could I... Could I... I woke up to Astrid. Mm. That fancy shield you have. How strong is it? It's pretty damn strong. It's Dwemer steel. Okay. Is Functionally it? indestructible. Yeah. So I think that Ash should probably get crushed if she were behind the like it has to be me. You it would be a matter of a dexterity based check to see like a reflexes based check to see if you um uh -huh. can avoid some kind of injury if something would have smashed the door open. Uh -huh. Astrid, it would be a strength base. So basically, you're small enough you could lightly avoid things. Okay. Astrid is too right. big, but could then resist with strength. I imagine right. you guys kind of understand what, what I'm planning. Mm -hmm. So I, I tell you. I would like to go up as well. And can I make a general knowledge check to just sort of gauge by, like, feeling, seeing how the water worked, try and, like engineering brain estimate roughly how bad opening this is going to be. Okay, I'll let you make a check and I'll base it on what you get. General knowledge? Yeah, sure. Also, how far is the corridor again? How long is it, sorry? It's like if I wanted to bolt. It's like 10 metres. It's not massively okay. long. Okay. One. Uh, you put your hands on it. You touch it up and down. You look down. You look at the crack. You look at the water on the floor. And you look down. You put your finger in the water. You lift it up. You touch it between your fingers. You look left and right. Very <laughs> pensive. Ooh, he's man looks very pensive. And then you step back and you're just like, fucking no clue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, well, um, like it could be like a foot of water behind the door that's just leaking through the bottom of the door when it's opening. Yeah. That would be hilarious. <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> so, what way to find out? Yeah. So there's like two doors, right? One behind us and then one in front of us. Mm -hmm. You're in a short corridor, yep. Yeah. Could we leave? Like, I'm sort of scared the room's gonna get flooded. The room behind, the door behind you is still open. We can, yeah, yeah. we can leave that open, okay. Annoyingly for my OCD, one side's open one way, the other side's open the other way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, like as you walk through together, like Azahari pulled and Ferdinand pushed yeah. and just like walked through. <laughs> Could I, how about like, we use the rope to open the door and I just stand there with my shield and you guys, hopefully the water will just like part like there's the no, sea. There's no rope. If there's water. There is a rope. Well, there's, not, rope. there's a it's very, very crappy rope. Good, though. Well, I mean, it, if there's enough water pressure behind it, it might be enough. As a hurry. Yeah. The real problem is there's nowhere to tie it on. Yeah. As a hurry is worried, she doesn't want you to get hurt more. Azahari can take the hit. So you're, you're, the one more you're the one that's still injured. Yeah, but you're the fighter. If you get hurt, you lose dice. Metagaming. Right. I don't want okay. yeah, you to lose dice. You're the one that's going to pretty much save us all. <laughs> okay. So, option A, I stand behind the door. Option B, I open the door and run as fast as I can. No, that's restoration. Can I knock on the door and see if there's anyone inside? <laughs> knock. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. The door resonates. It, the much deeper metallic sound to what the other doors have. That's God. terrifying. Can I put my ear to it? Yep. You don't hear anything. I hear anything. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm feeling the shield strategy. If, you, if you're happy for me to... You don't yeah. want to rope the door open? I'm just really keen to use my brand new shield that I found. Okay. So. Okay. All right. I feel like nobody should be in this corridor when it opens, if possible. Okay. Because okay. worst case scenario, like it floods and knocks you out. Mm. Um, you said the, the crappy rope is long enough, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's like 30 foot long. Okay. Is the Dwemer crossbow that was on the Guardian still functioning? You wouldn't even know how to fire it. It doesn't operate with a regular mechanism. Not like a regular crossbow mechanism? No, it's yeah. like a four strands and it's it, the mechanism is inside the arm. Can I grab one of the bolts that was fired yep. and attempt to hammer it into the door that's there? 
Yeah, you can attempt to. Well, if we put this into the door, then it gives something. I'm for so to tie scared. The rope. It's gonna just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna give you that. There's a way to tie the rope onto the door. Oh, okay. Oh. There it is. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, tie the rope on the door. Stand around the corner. Do our best to make sure that there is nothing that the rope is like angling on, because mm-hmm. that gives it a shear point. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Some engineer out there knows the term. Yeah. And then we just tug and then duck around the corner and hope that it's not enough water to flood this room because we closed the door. Mm-hmm. Cool. And if we open Let's it while it. it's flooding, that's that's going to hurt. <laughs> that's really going to hurt. Let's do it. So that's the plan. Who's on the rope? All of us. All yeah. three of you on yeah. the rope. So you tie it on. Okay. And then we're going to try and duck around. And I'm going like to say the length the of the rope ground. allows you to be sort of just past like Cut just rubber. in the doorway to the next into the banquet hall all three of you yeah okay. uh, and then we'll... so who's at the front i'll be at the front astrid's at the front and i'll have my shield ready to go g- ready just yeah. in case so you're holding the rope all three of you now i told yeah. you this was a tattered and frayed rope so yes. yeah i'm going to give you that the three of you together are going to have the strength to yank this door open and bust it open yeah, yeah. Especially because mm-hmm. there's uh, now that you've committed to a course of action, mm-hmm. there's a lot of water pressure behind it, so that's giving you a lot of extra strength. Yeah. But it's whether the rope holds whether up. the rope holds, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you beforehand what that will do. So, if the rope breaks, all it's going to do is you are going to all have to make it an endurance check to avoid hitting your asses. <laughs> okay. Because mm-hmm. it will snap, and the whiplash just will drop mm. you to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. If you're on the ground when a torrent of water comes through, obviously your ability to resist that will be significantly diminished. That's the car. Yeah. That's like the downside to yeah. the rope. Okay. So okay. destiny roll. And oh you, no! Can and you use not that dice? As a hurry, how are you at uh, at your scratchies? Do you like to do not lots of scratchies <laughs> on your rope? Uh, satisfying for your cat claws. To a degree, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you what use kind of dice? degree? I don't know. I feel like you know um, what kind of degree. There you go. Your meter roll. For if it's single these? digits, the Please rope snaps. Oh god! Oh no! What is he doing? Single digits, the that rope snaps. Azahari. Oh, Azahari has shown restraint. Uh. It was almost a twenty, which would be hilarious. <laughs> the 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 twine, the rope will hold. All right, the three of you okay. yank the door, and there's a moment of like awkward, and then like a twing, twing, as a couple of little bits of thread <laughs> off the rope like flick and break. <laughs> And then, boosh, the door just snaps back. The Both the doors fly into the walls at such velocity, you're pretty sure if you were behind them, it would have killed you. It just smashes into the wall. Oh. It's a massive metallic clang as you see water and zero oxygen. It's not like the water starts cascading through the sides. It's just like a wall that just goes, boosh, and just shoots towards you oh, down gee. the corridor. Oh, God. All of to... you make an endurance mm-hmm. check to hold against this. Now, hold. Astra- to, well, 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 oh, we don't have time to move, do we? You basically don't have time to move. <laughs> Astrid, yeah. challenge level for you is five. I'm going to give you a free plus one win okay. from your Dwemer shield. Okay. Now. If the person in front succeeds, it makes the challenge level for the next person easier. Okay. So who's next and I, who's at the end? I imagine I'd be behind Astrid. I guess I'm at the end. Okay. Astrid. So challenge level five, but you only need four successes because of the uh the automatic win. Goodbye. From your shield. Okay. Oh, oh, holy oh, yeah. Yeah. Holy shit! Holy yeah. shit! Hell yeah! Hey. Well done. Astrid. I am a god. The water. (laughs) The water comes forth like a... It's a torrent. It's just pouring forth. You drop to one knee, superhero style, and pull your Dwemer shield in front of you and, like, smack it into the ground in in a moment, a flurry of motion, and it resonates with this metallic clang across the room. When the water hits you, it hits your shield and explodes around it uh, in a circle. And there's so much water pressure, but you just channel all of your Nordic strength through the ground to steady yourself and then forward through your shield, almost like punching back into the water. So much so that for the first few seconds, you don't even get wet. The water (laughs) explodes around you like hitting a, like, you know, those massive waves hitting a lighthouse and it just explodes (laughs) around it. Yeah. So much so that you're going to make the endurance check challenge level five for the next person, which was Azahari, challenge level two. 
You just take so yeah. much of that brunt. However, that double bonus is, is going to be reduced just by one. Uh, unless Azahari also succeeds because the water's kind of blowing over you and then splashing in. Right. Child level four! <laughs> <laughs> Woo, <crazy. All> right. <laughs> Azahari, you hold your ground and you pull in behind Astrid and you manage to uh, like get in that, that back flow, Yay. which means I'm going to continue that in Ferdinand, Child level two. This is going to be so much harder, but you just destroyed that chair. It just, just went full Moses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm waiting to roll. So in America. I, I want to say things are going to change it, but... Channel three successes. Hey, well okay, done. I was it actually cleans to roll. my shield for me. <laughs> this, this brief period of this this moment of uh, of time that is bought for you by Astrid allows you to in your head calculate what is actually about to happen, and you realize the pressure isn't going to come forward for you. It's going to come from the sides. So you pull in towards uh, Azahari from behind, mm -hmm. and you actually brace outwards as it envelops and slaps into you, and you hold your footing, and then in the next few seconds, the water pushes in, and it comes around, swells around. It's still pouring past, and you all are now saturated because it just rapidly fills up. Um, but rather than now being hit with a brick wall of water, you are now fighting against a, a current upstream, but you're you're submerged, the shield is there, and you're all like in this bulk, like an arrow pointing yeah. forward. The water keeps coming. It keeps pouring out. At the top, you see it dip to the point where there's a little bit of oxygen and you can see a gap at the front, but it keeps pouring. What are you guys doing? Oh no, is this like the ocean that we've just opened up? <laughs> um, how strong is the current? Like Very strong. In fact, if Astrid wasn't the bulwark in front of you, you'd be getting swept away. I don't know if there's much we can do. Can we like see what that room looks like? Make a like, perception check. I'm going to say Astrid can uh, because you're at the front. If I just peek over my shield. Is it over our heads yet? No, 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 no. Not yet. Okay. There's a lot. Because even so though it's pouring out at a huge volume, nice. there is a massive room behind you and water stables. Yeah. So it's it's almost like that angle and you're like in, in there because it's pushing through and then flowing behind you. Okay, four. I got four. Four successes. Okay. You see into a large room, but clearly a smaller room than you're, you are currently in. Okay. Um, and it is currently emptying of water. Okay. Oh, okay. Shh. Do you tell us anything? You can't. Yeah. Uh, everything of interest in there is submerged. Okay. Uh, and it is weirdly illuminated by a handful of the Dwemer glow tubes that are still unbroken. Okay. Is it possible for us to move without getting swept away with this torrent? Uh, against it or back? Back towards the stairs that lead up a story, uh, which would be nice high ground to sit on. You you could go backwards. You'd have to make a check to not be like swept over, but you could. It's probably easier to move with the current than against it at this stage. Which, that would be with the current for a yeah, bit. Yeah. Uh, I do my best to convey that suggestion you can shout, shouting yeah. over the water. You want to go backwards? Like sl like slowly march backwards, holding your ground, making for the stairwell that leads up to all the bedrooms, because that's like a story of stairs. So we could just sit there and watch the water just go, if we get there. Or we could get like hit against the other side of the room. Mm. Okay. What, uh, what did you see, Astrid? Uh, the room is smaller than this one, but that's all I could see. It, is it possible to move against the current? You can move like against the current if you wanted to, to push into the room. Is that like to walk forward? Yeah. yeah you could. Which would be, would be harder than going the other way, which was my suggestion. Yeah. My you reckon? Is, then, yeah. Is that, is that the case? It would be more physically difficult, yes. To push forward than is to... But then we'd get possibly more hurt by... We could get failure. Well, we we could get swept away either way, but one of them is fighting oh, the true, current. Yeah. Yeah. The other one would be going diagonal because if to sort towards the room, which is would mm. also take us out of the direct path of the yeah. current once we went sideways. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I say we push forward. Mm. As Harry doesn't I'm, know, I'm just really confident with my new shield and that amazing role that I did. So. Cool. As a Hari I'm knows, communicating character. Let's you've met it enough. Let's. As do a it. Hari is a confident swimmer. She agrees with Astrid. Push forward. 
was beschworen. What's the point of pushing forward? It's not like the water's going to stop running faster if we get into the room. Well, it'll keep going down. At least, like, we know it's going to keep going down. Well, then we might as well stay you don't put. Have, Let's you don't have time to have this conversation, okay. make the call. So, Astrid, you're going to push forward? I just push forward. All right, I'm going to get you to make a... St you don't have to do what they're doing. Yeah, you can... No, but if I move out of the path of so, that... Just... So, with the cascading done, it's actually the same check endurance, but it's only going to be level three that you're looking for to okay. just push against this cascade of water. four successes, which is going to reduce the challenge level for the two of you two too, if you want to continue, or you are outside the range of Astrid's shield, you can also go back the other way safely, which will also be challenge level two. I'm with you for better or worse. Two okay. successes. I follow Astrid as well. Two, two successes. So you all push forward marching Astrid each step is like bought with with sweat and effort as you push your shield into the water the torrents the water level sort of starts to go down and then as you cross the precipice of the doorway uh you see that it surges back up again and then keeps coming at the same level and it stops sinking it stays at this level and you push past the precipice of the door and look around and you see in the room that sort of at, at full floor height through the water and you can only vaguely make it out uh, with the lighting and everything, that there is a pipe. And on the pipe, there is a large grate. And from that, you can just see the foamy rush of water pushing into the room. So there is basically a giant like sewer outlet equivalent sized grate that is just like a hydroelectric dam just pumping water into this room. Okay, I think we've seen enough. <laughs> is this over our head now? Make perception yeah. checks. Okay. Everyone. Yep. Challenge level <clears throat> four because it's underwater. There's a lot of uh, turbulence everywhere. This is a toughie. Four for Ferdinand. Four. Oh my God, it's the first time I've actually, uh, second time I've done well. No. One. One. Three. Three. Ferdinand, you are the only one that spots it. Uh, next to, across the other side of the room, there's debris, there's ruins, there's, like, whatever was in this room that's swirling in this, like, churning nightmare of water. A massive valve, valve. handle. Are we underwater at this point? You are like up to your chest in water. I point out the valve and at the same time I point to the grate and say freeze with a question mark. Freeze. With a quick like because yeah. like I know that you can only do it once per day. Yeah. So I'm like question mark, because we could probably make it there and close the valve. Freezing might buy us time, freezing might replace the valve. Right. You have seconds. <laughs> So like, valve freeze? What are you doing? Okay. That is the extent of the communication. In Let's this try the valve. All right. And if that doesn't work, then I'll And try. as you take a few more steps into the water and press into it, again, one of these like surges happens. And Ferdinand, with that perception check, you manage to look back and in your head, it's ticking over and you're going, this is flooding very quickly. Like this water, would, at the rate that it's coming out, this room, if it was just full of water, would already be drained. Uh, and the room behind you, the grand hall, is already fully, like at least a foot and a half of water as it's just pouring out. I uh, had a word. Hurry! And at this point, as Astrid pushes and braces against, and you're all behind her, the worst happens. <laughs> your feet lift off the ground as your buoyancy point lifts you above the ability to brace. Oh, God. And we will go into the next episode. Oh, no! no! <laughs> needing swim checks. Oh, no. Maybe. Oh. You suck. <laughs> All right. That was 
awesome. Yay. You are putting some weight into this exploration. Yeah. I know. Right? Just don't prove yeah. yourself, dang I'm it. killing it. That was too oh. good a point not to stop. I know. <laughs> it was just too dramatic. We can't have you solve the puzzle and oh. then move on. Yeah. The cliffhanger. Yeah, the cliffhanger. There better be something. If we get into this room, it's like, so what's in here? Water and sadness. <laughs> <laughs> it's in a really damp room. It smells just... kind of like wet dog. Yeah. Uh, so from what you've done, uh, your only exit from the Dwemer Ruins, you have sealed and re-trapped. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, re- and so now you, there's even more water. So, so there is, <laughs> and, and there is enough water. This pipe is filling this place uh, to the point that it will fill the whole room yeah. with water. Yeah. So you're yeah. kind of you kind of either quickly turn around, run, and open that fucking thing and take the damage and hope that you can then get out past a potential bear or whatever um, yeah. with injuries. You'll get swept away. It's fine. Or, or complete this challenge. So yeah, you. Yeah. Great. You know what I think it's time oh. for. Come to thank the patrons. What? You're right. (gasps) Mm. But that's that's new. But they're so quick. I always struggle to catch them. Just like sweeping water through a room. You know what's really funny? Actually, you know what I'm going to do? The patron, the patron speed thing. It's been fun. It's been fun, hasn't it? Yeah. What are you about to do? We're going to say thanks to our patrons. <laughs> uh, do- ellipses. Thank you, Ellipses. Dark Fox. Professor X. Yeah, Heltrus. Tickle Duck. Infinite Shadows. AJ Macy. Aussie Arty Party. Thank you, guys. Well, what Such I wanted... Aussie Arty Party is a new one. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Welcome. What I wanted to do is fix this. So, yeah. But I can't. So it turns out that the <laughs> scroll is a HTML element and I thought it was a Streamlabs element and I was like, oh, I'll just make it slower. Yeah. No. And no, on so that slow. note, see you in the next episode. <laughs> Bye. Bye.